Yes, I remember when this news broke, um, and people were thinking, wait a minute, if you can't be safe in your own home, where can you be safe? Um, but the details started to get very cloudy down to how she could ever mix up someone's home with her own home. It is in an apartment building like so many other apartment buildings. She lives on the third floor. He lives on the fourth floor. For whatever reason, she parked her car on the fourth uh, floor, walked down that hall. His door was unlocked. She walked in again. Her argument in this case is she simply made a horrible mistake. The prosecution in this case has simply said, no, she used deadly force when she walked in. Most police officers would not have to do that. This man was unarmed. This is murder. That's the focal point of this case. And mind you also, race. This is a white female police officer and a black victim sitting in his own home. We have had several cases here of officer-involved shootings. With that kind of scenario, it has caused, obviously, quite a controversy here. Um, as I said, KTVT, that's actually where I was a reporter for four years. Steve and I worked on many cases uh, in that state uh, involving, to your point, race. Steve, the first day of the trial, I think, sets the stage for so much of what we will see later on. It has not, though, been about race as far as her defense, certainly. Um, but how, how is her attorney, how is this defensible? I, I guess is the heart of what folks here want to know. How is she defending it? She's defending it essentially by saying, I made a horrible mistake. I did not mean to shoot this man. I thought he was a burglar. That's why I shot him. I thought I was going into my own home. Over two dozen times on the 911 call, she is telling dispatchers, I thought I was in my own apartment. And that is at the core of this, where her actions simply a horrible mistake, cost someone's life, or did she make the decision as a police officer to use her weapon and shoot someone who didn't pose a threat to her? That's the legal argument in this case right now. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Thank you to our KTVT partners as well. Um, let me bring in another dear friend of mine, Sonny Hostin, co-host of The View and host of Truth About Murder, which premieres next month on Discovery ID. Sonny, thanks for joining me. I know our audience, and I, I watched to see your reactions while, while Steve Pickett was giving his report. And honestly, Sonny, it's hard for any, anybody to understand. When you walk in your home, you know your home's smell. You know the furniture. You know, you know the texture of your home. Granted, the lights were out, yeah. but she is saying, I walked in. The door was unlocked. It was unlocked. I walk in. There was also a very large red mat outside of his apartment, and she did not have that very large red so mat. So she passed the outside red mat, which we see here. I'm gonna walk past. Okay, you walk past the red mat, you open the door, it doesn't smell like your home, you don't recognize anything in your home. Yeah. How does her attorney set the stage for the explanation of this was a horrible mistake? I'm a trained officer. Yeah. I'm trained to be more aware than the average citizen. Absolutely. But now I'm armed and I've taken a life. I think uh, her defense team certainly has an uphill battle because as you've pointed out, she's a trained officer and they are more trained to observe, uh, to de-escalate a situation like this. I've worked with officers my entire career when I was a prosecutor. And, and so I think her defense has to be this was an honest mistake, and I acted reasonably in self-defense. The prosecution, of course, is saying, you didn't act in self-defense. This was cold-blooded murder. You acted beyond the scope of your training. And I think the prosecution has a pretty strong case here. The problem uh, for this officer is that jurors typically do believe officers. They give them the benefit of the doubt. But this is a different type of case. We've heard all of these stories over and over and over again. Black people aren't safe driving. Black people aren't safe barbecuing. Black people aren't safe at the Starbucks having a meeting. Now black people aren't safe eating ice cream, watching television in their own homes. There are seven African Americans on that jury, seven out of 12. They're gonna look at this officer and think, this could have been my son, this could have been me, this could have been my husband. This but defense team has a hard time.